why is this one of the miracles discussed in the Bible? All the miracles that were seen and done, but only a handful was put in the Bible. And when you first study this, you say, well, you know, what makes this one special? My blind beggar. And it wasn't because of the mother, it wasn't because of the father, it wasn't because of the son. We talked about it, but what, but what makes this special? And then we start to realize, directly for him and indirectly for all of us, because look at that question in there when all of them said, well, who is he? We've seen him. Now, people have been walking by. Remember, he get, they walk by and they see that. We know the town drunks. We know, come on now, we, we know the people who fit those categories. We, some of you probably know the homeless people now. And whether you know them by name, you know them by sight, you see the stuff that happens and you, you see them walking by. And what comes to your mind? Remember I told you that we have to start seeing folk the way Jesus <coughs> sees them. And I think sometimes the reason why we can't see them in this first uh, text right point I want you to catch here. Now, what you think about that? Are you blind like the blind man, too? Mm. Well, I wonder why I couldn't see folk the way Jesus sees folk. Because we've got to work these texts. So then we just preach and go. But think about it. Now, I'm blind, too. Remember, he couldn't see the people around, but he knew. Somehow, he was able to get over there <coughs> in the spot to beg, to get what he needed, to get relief. Brother, when we want relief, we know which family members to go to. We know which church members to go to. We know which, come on, co-workers to go to. When we want, what, woe is me, feeling sorry for yourself, that's what relief means. You don't want deliverance, you just want relief. And you know who to go to just to get relief. Can I get an amen? I want you to see it that way. We know, and it's crazy. Because nobody wants to be, I told you so. Nobody wants to get beat down, so I gotta realize even myself, because sometimes I, I'll beat you down, and I gotta be careful because I gotta love you out of your situation when you come. And it's hard not to say, I told you so. I told you not to do that. Now you're doing this. You got that knot on your head, you want me to put some ice on it. And I'm telling you, I'm not going I told you not to jump on that bed, little boy. <laughs> Mama running there and grabbed it. So he, he doesn't know mama going to save me. You think about all the different, I want you to think about all that because we can see that. Are you blind like the blind man too? What's that really mean? So let's go back. I know Jesus was humble. We talk about this. How can you be humble and bold at the same time? And I struggle with it because I know I, I have a whole lot of boldness and I come at your time. And, but to really understand that humble piece. Because look how the, is this a humble statement? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. <laughs> does that sound humble? That don't sound humble, does it? That sounds bold. I know who I am. I am the light of the world. And when I come, I'm coming to expose your darkness. I want you to think about some stuff that we're going through this. It's like, wow, good stuff here. So the very first point. And, brother, this is the problem. And I think sometimes for my years, all those years, why I struggled, I was in church on Wednesday, in church on Sunday, praying, preaching, teaching, and I had dirty hands. I'm not talking about other folk. I'm talking about what, come on, I had dirty hands. And then when I heard that powerful message from Elder Wood, I'll never forget, you can't make clean biscuits with dirty hands. So see, sometimes we go through this. That's why we don't have that joy. Because we've not been lifted up by him. We've been lifted up by each other, but we've not been lifted up by him. Can you not see Jesus either with your earthly eyes? Do you even recognize that you need your eyes adjusted worldly and spiritually? And that's what messed me up, Brother Gus. You couldn't tell me because I'm going, I'm better than you. I go to church on Wednesdays. I go to church on Sunday. So I'm comparing myself to you. And as long as I compare myself to you, I think I'm okay. Mm. But when I compare myself to Christ, oh, whoa, I recognize I need to be adjusted worldly and spiritually. Now just keep that in mind as we kind of go through this. Remember what he said, I am the light. And as long as I'm here, you got a chance. Remember what he said previously to that. Why I may be found, because there's going to come a time, night's coming, and you're not going to be able to find me. But I'm here right now, and I am the light. 
And there was something interesting in this text and we get through this. I'm glad Jesus is looking for us. I'm glad Jesus is looking for us. Is Jesus looking for you or are you looking for Jesus? I don't know how you answer that. Relief folk are what? If relief folk looking for him or not looking for him? They're not. Folk who've been delivered is what? They looking for him. Come on, come on, you gotta know. So you gotta figure out where you are right now. I, I'm looking for mama to save me. I'm looking for the preacher to save me. I'm looking for the church to save me. I'm looking for family. Come on, brothers, I'm telling you. And I'm just glad that I realized that while I wasn't looking for Jesus from, tw from 13 to 32, he was looking for me. And guess how I know? Because that no matter how bad I was, what I would do, something urged me to still get there on Wednesday. Something urged me to still get there on Sunday. Something kept working inside of me, pushing me to go. Even though I wasn't living right, something still said, you got to go. And now I look back over my life and say, whoa, thank you, Jesus. For being with me when I wasn't looking for you. When I was looking for relief. Because see, Wednesday gave me relief. Sunday gave me some relief. But I didn't really want Jesus. And remember I told you this in my personal testimony. I never asked Jesus to deliver me from that darkness. Whatever it is. And I'm going to make this thing plain to you. Because it's crazy how I guarantee you. Whatever you're going through right now. And you still struggle with it. I guarantee you most of you have never asked Jesus to come in your life. And strip you from it. First of all you didn't think you needed to be stripped from it. You didn't think it was a problem. I told you. I told you. I had a definition that was good. Sin was only when you got caught. As long as nobody knew about it, I'm okay. Not realizing that Jesus saw it all. He knew it all the whole entire time. And that's why I shout and preach and pray the way I do now. Because he loved me in my worst condition. He saw it all and still loved me. He didn't turn his back on me. <sighs> what a nugget I found. As long, the light. And brothers, remember, it is our darkness that Jesus is looking to deal with. The very thing that popped in your mind that you keep trying to hide from him and all of us is what he's trying to deal with. Because we all got some darkness. We all got some dirtiness. We all got some deep, dark secrets in there. And that's what he wants to expose. And we keep trying to hide it from you. But you remember I told you Deuteronomy is one of my favorite. The secret things belong to the Lord anyway. Because when it's time to be revealed, brother, there ain't nothing you can do to. Because he, if he wants it to come out, it'll come out right now. <coughs> remember, it is our darkness that Jesus is looking to deal with. The very thing that you're trying to hide from it is what he wants to deal with. Do you want relief today or do you still want deliver? Are you want deliverance? The second thing, six through seven. We dealt with the light piece. Now let's deal with six through seven. <laughs> Ooh -wee. I didn't realize I was in such a struggle for so long in my life. Now let's read it six and seven again. Look what it says. <laughs> what it says. And he said, these things, he spit on the ground. Ah. Now, come on, brothers, let's keep it 100. This brought me back to my remembrance. Now, I don't know if some of y'all was raised like this or not, but I kind of had one of them mamas that uh, we didn't live by so long. You got up, you got up. And every now and then, <laughs> you'd get up, and it'd be 10 minutes before you had to get out. And it wasn't no water. Wasn't no wash rag. <laughs> I know, Mama, I'm telling your secret. <laughs> Come on, man. I know that I'm not the only one. Mama, I don't know where she got that from. Cause, you know what? You didn't get to brush your teeth. You didn't get to comb your hair, but she made sure she got that mat out of your eyes. <laughs> I look back, she 
these people come back and say, wow, that's what I can pay. No wonder. And then I get to school some days, I say, well, I probably do smell musty. <laughs> you know, I'm that kid now that's crazy to go out kids shower. When they got the super mom to make sure. And I was the only kid that went to school that, and the teacher didn't want to be beside me. And I was say, that was me. I was that kid. And it's crazy because some of you can't tell that whole story. Look, but you come to look at a kid and go like, wow, it's crazy how life can come at you fast. And somehow you get to, whoa. Now, most of you ain't going to never tell that story to you. That every day your kids got there, they done brushed their teeth and had their breakfast, their hair looking good. You ain't never had wrinkled clothes on them. I know you're going to be super mom. But there's some in here that sent them out that way. And I am telling you, it's interesting. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go. Mm, mm, mm. The command, that key piece, go. Go. And I want you to think about some stuff right now. You look at your life right now and see. Well, it is personal. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. All of that time, he's going. He's getting what he was getting. And now all of a sudden, someone comes by by the name of Jesus, spits on the ground, puts it on his eyes, and now he can see. It's hard to believe. That's why it's personal. See, no one else ain't going to believe that. Who is this? You heard all the stuff in the text. Who is this? Some say he looks like, come on, they trying to figure out how. There's no way you turned out the way you turned out. Because I knew your mama. I knew your daddy. I knew your grandparents. I knew your family struggle. And there's no way it looks like you. But I know you didn't really turn out that way. You're right. I wouldn't have turned out if Jesus hadn't have showed up and showed out. Oh, you ought to shout one day. See, some of y'all don't understand that the reason why you turned out the way you turned out is because God spit on you. Yeah. 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 Oh, you'll catch it later, baby. Some of you ain't been spit on yet. Well. <laughs> but you may be, you laugh when you ain't been spit on because look what happened. Will you obey Jesus blindly too? Because look what he did. This, but he know now. I can see. I couldn't hear him. I didn't know what was going on. Look at the man's result for obeying the man of God's voice. Brother, you obey somebody's voice. You obey somebody's voice. You listen to somebody. Somebody's speaking to you. You're hearing somebody. And you better be careful that you're not listening to somebody who's making dirty biscuits. You ought to hear a man say, follow me as I also follow Christ. I'm not perfect, and I'm trying to make a mistake, but brother, I'm following Christ who's keeping me going straight, and that's who you ought to be following. And then he says this, remember he could not see who it was. He was blind. He couldn't see. He just knew since Vanessa that somebody's been helping him all these years. But this was a different voice. Come on now. This was a different help. All he could see is that he got there and got what he needed for that time. It was just a place that he went to all the time because he knew a lot of the people passed by there. So relief, but not healed yet. For this is powerful. The blind beggar, blind from birth. And he went there every day because he knew that he was going to get some relief. But he did not see him, did not know him. I mean, I'm telling you, some folk come to church and they walk out the same way. And they cut all your property. And they walk out the same way. And they go to Sunday school. And they walk out the same way. And they go to Wednesday service. And they walk out the same way. Something is wrong. They preach. They pray. They teach it. They teach it. They, teach it, they, 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 they sing in the choir. And yet, nothing changes. Are you going to get this kind of preaching when you say it? They won't make you feel better. Something, something got to change. I'm doing all the right thing, but my life is still dirty. My life is still empty. I have no joy. I have no peace. I've got all kinds of money. i got all kinds of education. i got everything I keep saying, but something is still missing. And then the third thing in that six and seven, 
Are you ready for the wonderful change about to take place in your life too? And brother, this is crazy how it happens. Brother, way before uh, he spiritually got, come on, he was physically and spiritually now. Because I wonder if it had been the other way around, he still couldn't see. But God healed him physically and then healed him spiritually. And now he's on his way. We're going to have a good time. We're going to see. And he answered the call. And he did everything God told him to do. He blindly went. I'm going, Lord. I heard your voice. I heard it. And I'm going to do what you called me to do. I'm not going to play with this thing anymore. I want to be made whole physically and spiritually. And that's a beautiful picture when you can start talking to God like that. Lord, I need you. Not now, but right now. From the inside out. Heal me. Deal with my darkness, Lord. You know it. Call it out. Quit playing around with God and call it out tonight. Don't call it out publicly until you call it out in the night with the Lord. Call it out. Tell him what you're struggling with. Call him. Talk to him. And then he will allow you to reveal it publicly because he worked with you inside. Too many of you get excited and you want to call it out in front of everybody. That's why I call it a test of lie and not a test of fact. Because you got excited and told everybody, and we saw you two days later doing the same old thing. So be careful running your mouth. Come on, God, God going to take care of you. Come on, I'll make it plain. He's going to take care of you physically and spiritually. Uh, and we start to close this thing, yeah. The third thought, oh my God, oh my God. I get frustrated when I hear folks say this. And I never understood all those years ago when I would say that. And I would correct folk, and now I really walk in it. See, folk can tell you what they really think about it and who he is. The next time somebody's around you, I hope that's offensive when they say the big man upstairs. Don't worry in the battle called the big man upstairs. I don't know what you mean, the big man upstairs. He's got some names, and you ought to know some names. Now, I was like, why are you the big man up there? That's so impersonal. You got to know him personally. The man, I, I didn't know who he was. That's what the blind man said. But I can tell you what he did for me. And then, when it came full circle, he started telling everybody who he is. I know him for myself. Not what my mama said. Not what my daddy said. Not what the preacher said. I know what he did for me. Churches take off when they often start saying what he did for me. My mama brought me, and then I met him for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Too many of you still riding off on what your mom and daddy said, what the preacher said. I want you to know him for yourself. Uh, look what he said here. If we close this thing here. Read it again. I'm just not gonna slop you, I'm gonna feed you. Therefore, the neighbors, we talked about the neighbors in Sunday school, Deacon May. And those who previously had seen that he was blind, see, folk don't want you delivered. See, this text messed me up. Folk ain't happy when you deliver. Oh, they might smile when you get some relief. But when you've been really delivered, look what happened in this text. Folk ain't happy when God really delivers you. And that's why this kind of preaching hits us hard. Because we sit here in church and think we have it for one another. And dang on it. How will they know by the love you have one for another? I ought to be shouting when your marriage was on rocks and then it came back together. I ought to be shouting when your kids got caught and went wayward and now they're back home and they're doing good. Not talking that shit. Isn't God good? Look what he did for that child. So when your child falls, you say the same God that helped my child will help your child. And others say, come on now, there we go with the day in the kingdom. Yeah. And I've been in both groups. That's why I can preach the way I preach. I know, I wish I had. I'm part of they sometimes, and I'm part of them. That's why we get so confused. One minute I want to put you in heaven, and next minute I'm trying to put you in hell. Be careful. That's why we get so messed up, the they and the them. We don't need you to be the they or the them. We just need you to be a man or a woman of God and walk in love. If God ain't delivering, then you can do it. Yeah. Your talking about him ain't going to help you. Yeah. 
Go lift him up and go help him. You just need to get out of the way and watch God do it. Amen. Turn over to God. You got a way with this and a way with that. Give them to God. And he goes, and therefore they said to him, how were your eyes open? Folk want to know. Folk want to know. I'm right here telling you. Folk want to know. How did you change? How do you see the way you see now? How do you love the way you love now? How do you have the peace that you have now? How do you have the joy that you have now? How do you walk in the fruits of the spirit now? Folk want to know. They want to know how. And you can tell them. And he answered and said, a man called Jesus. A man called Jesus, not the big man upstairs, not Centennial Baptist Church. That's just a place I fellowship. Come on. Too many times we done gave a building more credit than Christ. For time's sake, we get on that here. Jesus is more than a big man upstairs. I put it in the big one. I gotta break some of y'all for You want a big man upstairs? My daddy big, he upstairs. <laughs> I love my daddy. Pat Short upstairs. He big man. Toby was upstairs. Come on. Toby, come on. And I'm talking to the Lord, her, her dad. Come on now. What are we talking about? Upstairs. What's that mean? Upstairs. I want to know, and I'll give you a few to hit me, the ones that I like, and there's a whole bunch of them. If you want to leave, go in my office and, and, and tur turn left, and you'll see it in there, and take a picture and go home and study all the names so that when folk ask you, how do you describe him? And then you can describe him like this. Ah, he's Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's the Lord of Hosts. That's what I'm talking about. I want this kind of, I want folks to talk like this. Yeah. Man upstairs. Don't come give me no info. Man upstairs. I don't know who you're talking about. But I know who you're talking about. Jesus is. And at least you to whatever he needs. Whatever you need him to be. I pray today that when you walk out of here, that you'll be able to say, what the blind, we get to talk about that next week. I want to get ahead when you have to break it down. We'll get to talk about that some next week, about how he didn't total get, he wasn't total delivered until he came back around. And he saw him. He said, that's him. You ain't hiding. That's Jesus. I know what he looks like now. I see him. See, the first time, I got to know his text. So I can't just rush too much. The first time he was still blind. So he didn't see him. He knew his name, but he didn't see him. But we preached that sweet. Woo wee. You got to know his name, like Deborah. You got to know his name. Yeah. And that's why you got to know his name. Jesus paid it all. All to him. All. Mm -hmm. Ain't that an old song? It is. Yes. It is. And I just hit me, hit me. Oh. I think that you'll have something come back to you. That's an old song, isn't it? It is. What, what is that song? He paid it all, didn't he? Them old, them old spirituals, that's, a, that's in the hymnals, isn't it? Wow. That's crazy. I'm just writing notes down. Jesus paid it all. I wish I could sing. All to him, I owe. Oh, come on, come on. See you, what, what, what? Say the other part. Sin has lost all. Oh, yes, sir. That's right. Now it's coming to me. Come on, what else? That all we know. <laughs> but ain't that a beautiful thing? That's how God works. Jesus paid. When you walk out here, realize he paid it all. And all to him. All. And unfortunately, you ain't going to hear me saying. <laughs> I love you. 